In this video, I'll show you tips and tricks on how to trade on futures. So first things first, if you place an order with your whole deposit, well, the order will be placed all in. If you open a short and long order in quick succession, then it can happen that both orders will be placed at the same time with the whole deposit. So it worked at this time, as you can see, uh, both orders are placed on the exchange. This is pretty convenient, so you'll, if you'll use the moonshot strategy, this is pretty doable. Of course, you will not be able to place two long orders at the same time using your whole deposit. Well, anyways, exploit this bug before Binance finds out about it. The second key point is that using the 1% scale, we can trade on micro movements. So, as you can see here, one sell plus the commission equals to 1% of the order. So, approximately one and a half cells is about this 1% of the order. Also, as you can see, I have some trades going on here. Today was a bit of a hard day, as you can see. I didn't pay attention and had to repel this fat minus here afterward. However, uh, good profit overall can be achieved on futures. There were lots of situations where a crazy amount of profit could be made, but unfortunately, I missed it. So let me show you. So first of all, I missed the start. Let me switch to the 10% scale. And as you can see, there were 3% spikes. Uh, figuratively speaking, if you collect the whole spike, you can get plus 60% to your order. And I could have done this six times in a row. Besides, another scenario is when you're trading in regular altcoin markets. And you buy after you see a spike, then wait for the next one, but it doesn't happen and the price starts going down. And you can lose a lot of money this way. In uh, this case, you can set short orders. So if the spike happens, your order will be bought out, out there on top. So the risk is minimal. There's actually a low chance that the BTC will go up by 3% and then continue. There are simple spikes. Here there's about 4-5% to to the order, but such spikes are a rarity now. Well, they used to happen in the first two testing days, but then it stopped. Besides, I had moonshots set up here at 0.3-0.4%, to but after such powerful spikes I understood that I could have gotten, like, a very huge minus. Because, as you can see, after this spike, Moonshot could have set a buy order much higher, so the risks are pretty high. So, try not to risk it and keep the 15 minutes delta in mind to avoid, to avoid such occurrences. Now, as a disclaimer, I do not recommend trading on more than two than one bot simultaneously. Because if you're uh, if you're doing this, you're running the risk of being short on deposit side, uh, or increasing your position if such a position was already previously opened by a different bot. Uh, this type of trading actually is very risky and can lead to the loss of a large share of your deposit size. Uh, before overall engaging in futures trading, I would ask you to carefully study all inherent and underlying risks, as well as acknowledge all the possible ones. And, of course, last but not least, never go all in.
device. However, when we were testing the module out, there was no stop loss. So mm, you can trade safely now. Also, just in case, I uh, recommend double checking your balance on the exchange after each trade because I had a situation yesterday. So I was trading on the bot and was checking the exchange meanwhile. And I see an open order with $300 profit on the exchange. And I thought, well, how neat. And I closed the order with the market price, thinking that it was just moon bot that lagged and I was expecting plus 300 to my deposit. Apparently, there was no such order and I've set a long order with my deposit, my deposit being sold by market price. So, if you use the exchange and see some weird order which you don't see in Moonbot, then refresh the page first and only after that you can take a decision and do whatever you want to. So this was the second important key point. So next thing, uh, when there's not much movement on the altcoin market and let's say for those who trade in really small vo volumes in uh, the USDT for example, futures is much more convenient since the commission is a couple of times smaller. So obviously we can go and trade on micro movements. So if you want to trade on the Tether Bitcoin pair, it would be more logical to uh, trade on futures. Another moment. If uh, you decide to trade in a basic pair, then there's more real volumes and traders in here. Since there's more real buyers and sellers in this pair, it'll be easier to close your orders. Futures pairs, even though the volumes are bigger, the number of active traders at this point in time is smaller. Uh, meaning that if you will put an order inside the spread here, the chances of it being filled are much more slimmer. You need to keep that in mind, so I recommend setting the order a bit lower than usual and if you have an, act, act, an active order and in a long position and you want to sell it. Because there are such situations where you try to close a trade at a peak with a high profit, you set the order inside the spread but nobody wants to fill it. Also a helpful tip would be to use the trades which happen on the exchange itself as reference. Uh, that's especially helpful if you don't have, for example, a second display to monitor your other bots. Also, unfortunately, spikes occur less frequently now, even though the coin is pretty volatile. So the only spike happened here, however BTC fell down by 5% here, so that's why a 0.5% spike happened. So in case you'll want to set up a moonshot strategy, then first of all you'll need to limit the 15 minutes delta, since your deposit is much more important than uh, some 2% profit. Another important thing is that if, for example, let's imagine that I entered a short position for half of my deposit, let's say $500, and the price went the wrong way, and Moonbot shows me a minus of $200. So what I want to do is enter a square position and sell higher, but when I want to and I try to do this, I can't. Well, why so? Because futures works in such a way that your minus is taken not from an open position, but from a free position. As in, if I open the trade for $500 and have a $200 minus on it, then I will be able to open another one for $300, not $500. You need to keep that in mind since some days ago I got into a sticky situation, trying to enter a square position during a price race, but I couldn't open any orders because I was in a big minus and this despite having around $500 left, I couldn't place an order, because the minus was actually feeding off of my deposit. So these were the base tips and tricks. If you, if any new features appear, then we'll make more videos.
Oh, and one thing that slipped my mind is this PNL number here. It's synced with the exchange, uh, and here it's written how much net profit I made up until now for all the time I traded on futures. Also, one more important tip. I recommend monitoring the exchange at, at the same time as you trade. Why? Because as previously, previously explained, there's a taker's commission and a maker's commission. While using Moonbot, the exchange will usually process your trade with a taker's commission. So the actual fees uh, might differ. And also, for those who don't know, a maker is the one who creates liquidity on the market. The taker is the one that buys on the market thus paying a higher commission. So that's it for now uh, and see you guys in the next video.